Hey guys, Chad Trofkerbin here from the Incredible Tutorials YouTube channel. Jim Mills and I have teamed up with Smith Micro to bring you these brand new Anime Studio 10 tutorials. So I hope you're ready, because we're about to get started. This video will show you how to get started using Anime Studio Debut. We won't be going too depth into anything particular, but it will help you get up and running with the software. So first, make sure that beginner's mode is deselected. The reason for this is because in this video, we will be accessing all the tools here on the left, or at least some of them. Beginner's mode disables these. So now, if we go to file and save, we can ensure that we are saving the project right off the bat. Make sure you do this often. Then go to file project settings, and here you can adjust now the dimensions and frame rate of your project. We'll keep this at 480p at 24 frames per second, but you can adjust this to anything if you wish. Once you have decided on your options, you can click OK. So now, what we'll do here is import a character from the content library. That will give us a good idea of how things can be animated and we can work then with other aspects of Anime Studio. So we'll click on Library on the top right. This will then bring up the Content Library window. And you can see here we have all these built-in assets to choose from. We can add our own assets to this later, but for right now we'll focus in on these new Anime Studio 10 assets. So we'll click on the Venus Flytrap, and we can use the double check mark to add it. Now once you do this, you may get a window like this asking you which layers you want to bring in. Well, we want to bring in the plant and the fly that he eats. And then click OK. So now we can close out of the content library window. And you can see now that we have the plant on screen. We have some layers here making up the plant and the fly. If we were to click on this arrow, you'll see that we have all these different sub-layers inside the main plant layer. Now, don't get scared. We're not going to be focusing in on those. We're simply just showing you here what it can take to create a complex character. So, we can just close that up. And what we're going to do first is come down here to the timeline. You can see that we have all sorts of dots. These indicate animation points or keyframes. If we play this out, you can see that we have an animation occurring. So with these dots or keyframes, just remember that they indicate change on the timeline. So the next step here, let's take this plant and come over here. And you can see we can click on these bones that make up the plant with the Select Bone tool. And these are, in fact, called bones. This whole thing is called a character rig. Basically, you rig it up so that you can animate it out with bones. If we go to frame 144 and choose the Manipulate Bones tool, we can click and drag on these bones and move them around. You can see as we do this, it manipulates the character. This is how animation typically works in Anime Studio. Once you have a rig set up, you can then use your Manipulate Bones tool or the Transform Bones tool and move your characters around in this fashion. But we'll remove the keyframes from 144 right now by highlighting them and hitting the delete key on your keyboard. And we can come back here to frame zero. So now let's just add some camera adjustments here. We can use the zoom camera tool, hold down and move down to zoom in. And then the track camera allows us to click and hold and move around to position the frame where we want it. So now let's do a little bit more here. You can see that layer one is on the canvas and we always have a layer when we start Anime Studio. But let's say you didn't, you don't have a layer to work with. Well, you can come up here to the new layer button and we can choose vector. A vector layer will allow us to use the drawing tools in Anime Studio. We'll name it BG for background and bring it below everything else on the layers panel by dragging and dropping. Now we can take what is called the draw shape tool 
and we can choose a rectangle. This will allow us to draw a rectangle really easily or any of the shapes on the top bar. Now we can click and drag and put this rectangle all the way around the blue border. The blue border indicates the scene or what the audience will be seeing when we export. Anything outside is invisible. So now we could add a color to this rectangle. We could come down here to our color swatch and left click on a color for the fill. Choose the paint bucket tool which allows us to fill in and click inside the rectangle. You can also choose to do fill, stroke, or both depending on your situation when filling in. Now let's say we want something more. Let's take the select shape tool, click on the rectangle, come over here to your effect, and let's choose gradient. A gradient allows us to go from one extreme color to another. So here we could choose, let's say, yellow, and then click OK. And then for the other color, we could choose orange. And I said from one extreme to another, but sometimes you can be pretty subtle with it too. And then click OK. You have other options at the top, such as linear, radial, which will make a round effect. You have reflected and more. So we'll just choose linear for right now and click OK. It kind of gives us a morning or evening look. Now you'll see we have these handles we can work with and if we move these around you can see we can adjust the position and the length of the gradient. So that will just depend on your needs. We can leave it right there for right now as that works. So coming down here we can kind of adjust here and what we're going to do now is we're going to create a shadow. Make sure you're on frame zero. Frame zero is your workspace and double click on the plant layer. You'll now see you have some tabs. Click on shadows and choose perspective shadow on. This will allow us to create what appears to be a 3D shadow that is being casted due to the character's movements. So for the blur, we'll choose something subtle. Let's go with about, oh, let's see here, 1.25. Yeah, that should work. We'll go with 1.25. For the scale, let's go with about 0.5. And for the shear, we can leave this at about, let's say, negative two. For the color, you can adjust the opacity of the shadow. We can bring it down a little bit. And then we can hit apply or OK. If you hit OK, you are done with the layers settings panel. And from here now, what we can do is go up to file and preview. Because we can't see the shadow right now. But once we preview, you can see what the shadow looks like. And we can just close out of that once we're done. And You'll be using Preview a lot to view a lot of effects in Anime Studio. So now what we can do is we can click on this background and let's see here, make sure we're on frame zero. Again, that is your workspace. This is where you draw and rig characters. We'll make a new vector layer and we'll name this one clouds because we'll add some clouds to the background that are moving as our plant is animating out. So we'll take what is called the add point tool and we can come over here to the style palette and we will choose some appropriate colors here. We'll go white since most clouds are white and we can turn off gradient but let's turn on soft edge. This will allow us to get a fluffy looking cloud and we can adjust the blurriness of this. We'll put it to 20 right now and hit OK. Now what we can do, let's make sure that auto weld and auto fill are turned on. And we can just now start placing points down by clicking and dragging and going from one to the other to create a cloud shape. Now, of course, you could have all sorts of shapes of clouds. We'll just go with something like this for right now, and you can easily alter these points later on. Now, when we weld the shape together, you'll see that we have a black outline and that's not something we want. 
So we can take the Select Shape tool, click the cloud, and then click Stroke to turn it off. So now we just have the fill, which is really nice looking. Now, of course, the cloud doesn't look all that soft until we render it out. But in this case, it might be too soft. And to do a shortcut for rendering, you can use Control R. So now let's reduce the radius here to about 10 for the softness, and we can try it again. It's looking better, but we could probably go even less. So let's reduce that one more time to about seven. And then we can um, chest it out if we want, but I think we're good. And let's go back here to the color and let's add a little bit of transparency. You can see we have this meter right here for the fill color, and we can just bring it down as far as we want to make the effect transparent and you can see that's reflecting on the left side where the cloud actually is. When we render out, we can see now it's looking good. So now we could come in here with the transform points tool and we could start making some adjustments if we wish. Like for instance, there might be some points here we want to move or we want to tighten up and we can easily do this just by clicking and dragging them around. So you could use what is called the curvature tool to tighten things up or round things out more if you want. We can just bring points up like that. And you can use the curvature tool anywhere you want. We can tighten these corners up and we can take now the transform points tool and just kind of keep molding and sculpting here. Anime Studio is more of a sculpting software, I would say, than it is anything else because really it's all about shaping and molding your objects to how you want them. So now what we can do is we can highlight this entire cloud and we can copy it to create a second cloud. You could also use the transform points tool and click on the cloud itself to highlight all the points. Now you could go up to edit and copy to copy or control C and then edit and paste or control V to paste out the cloud. Now you won't see anything happening right away. However, if you flip horizontally at the top, you can see now that we do actually have a second cloud. And you don't have to flip it, but that will give it some variety and not look just the same as the first. So now if we render out, we can see what this looks like. So we now have some clouds in the sky. Well, of course, we need to animate these clouds out. And there's a few ways we could do that. But let's go to frame one, and we'll use what's called the transform layer tool. It will allow us to move all the objects on the layer at once. What we need to do is just click once on that layer to create what is called a keyframe, or a change on the timeline. Now, we can advance forward to about, let's say, frame, 144. We can then take the mouse and click and drag to the left. This will then move the clouds and you can see a dot has formed on the timeline or a keyframe. So now if we play this out you can see the change on the timeline. So that's looking pretty good. So what happens now? Well let's say we're done. We are happy with this animation. First you'll want to save it, but then go to export animation. This will allow us to create a video for the project. Now as you can see we have some options here. We can choose which frames to render out. If you want to render out your whole animation you'd click entire animation, but if you want to choose a segment you can enter in those frames at the top. You can also choose your format. We'll use QuickTime and we can click OK. And here you could then choose where to save your movie file. But just to demonstrate, let's just cancel this and go back into that dialog window. And let's choose some frames here. Now, we're not quite sure, but let's say we come down here and we're playing this out. And OK, let's start at about 30 and go to about frame 60. That sounds about right for what we want to animate out here. So we can go to export animation. Let's do 60 
and let's do 90. I changed my mind. <laughs> so we'll do about 60 and 90 because we want to get the byte. And we can hit save and we can choose our compression settings. I would recommend animation and I would leave the keyframes as is. The depth of colors, you can do millions of colors plus for the best results. And for quality, I would usually choose best. But once we render out now, we can see here we have basically a window showing us the progress of the render. Now this might take a really long time. It just depends on the details of your animation. It might take a relatively short amount of time. Again, it just depends on what you are doing with your animation. And it also depends on the speed of your computer. So you have to learn to be a little bit patient during this process, but it will continue to render out. And once it's done, we'll be able to see a preview of the animation. What will happen here is it will pop up your preferred video player on your computer. So depending if it's Windows Media Player, QuickTime, VLC, whatever, here we go. And then it will play out the animation that you just rendered. So you can see it and you can decide if you want to keep it, if you want to add to it, if you want to send it off, if you want to upload it to YouTube. Really, the choice is yours. So it just depends on what you want to do. So there's one more thing we can do here. Let's add in a sound effect. We can come up here to the layers, making sure we're on frame zero, and choose audio. We can then import an audio file from the computer. So we'll choose this one. It's a chomp sound effect and import it in. You can see here it's on the far first frame and we want it to occur when he bites down. So we can go to what is called the sequencer here, but first let's find the spot where he's about to bite down. So right about here, we can then come over here to the sequencer and we can then just take that sound file and move it to where our marker is so that the green arrow matches 72. That's the start of the animation or the sound. Now, come back here and we can play this out. We can hear now what that sounds like. So that is pretty cool. If you'd like more information on Anime Studio or more in-depth tutorials, you can visit the official Anime Studio website at anime.smithmicro.com. Thanks for watching, guys. We hope you found this useful, and we will see you next time.